To execute an interactive task in a business diagram process, we must have in our KB a transaction object or a web panel to be associated with the task. Dynamic forms enable us to create data entry screens directly from the workflow client and associate them with interactive tasks in runtime without the need to write a single line of code. A typical scenario where we use these forms is the case when we get a new requirement for data entry and the system is already in production. Instead of redesigning the application, we could create dynamic forms and adapt them in runtime to store information without the need to modify the application's database. Another example could be, whenever we need to store data relative to a given process that was not provided for in the original workflow, to include information that relates only to each instance in the process. Dynamic forms enable us to store such information in workflow tables without the need for structures in the database for this type of information. Let's explain these concepts further by developing an example. Suppose that the travel agency needs to record some preferences of passengers who hold a ticket reservation. The idea is to record the following. Special aspects regarding meals, for example, sodium-free, vegetarian, diet beverages, etc. The passenger needs to be reminded as to specific medicine intakes, or we must record the passenger's age, specifically to confirm the passenger is at least 18 years old. Since we don't want to store this data in the system's database, because it might depend on the passenger's preference for each particular flight, we will request these details through a task associated to a dynamic form during the reservation process upon confirmation. We will need certain permissions to access the creation and modification of dynamic forms. So, in GXflow Client, we go to Management Console, select Users, and in the Users window, we press the Roles button. We check GXflow Form Designer and press OK. We now close the session and log in again as WF Administrator. We can see that in the browser and under Statistics, we now have a group called Dynamic Forms with three components. The definitions of dynamic forms we determine, the elements of the forms defined, and the domains used in the definition of the elements in the forms. To view these concepts, we implement a dynamic form with what the travel agency has requested. We click on Form Definitions and press the New button. We call it Passenger Preferences and press Confirm. Now we will define the elements we will include inside the form. We select the Passenger Preferences form and press the Elements button, and we will see that the form window opens up, so we move the mouse inside the frame and press the Plus button. We get a dialog box to enter the element. In this element, we will store the details regarding the passenger's meals, so we enter the name, Meals, Considerations, And in the description, we enter Special Requirements for Passenger Food. We modify the character type so that it's 60 characters long. We leave the remaining fields with their default value and press Confirm. We now see the form with the first element of the text type already entered. We press the plus sign again and enter a new element to record whether the passenger wishes to be reminded as to any medicine intake. For the name we write, Reminder to take medications, and in the description, indicates if the passenger wants to be reminded to take medicines. We leave the value of the type in Boolean and press Confirm. We can see that a checkbox has been added where we will be entering the Boolean data. And lastly, we will create one more element in order to record the passenger's age. We press the green button and call it passenger age dash should be greater than 18. And in the description, verify if passenger is over 18 years old. We select the numeric type, two characters in length, and with no decimals. 
we press confirm and we will see the element added to the form. We will now add a rule so that this control is done automatically. We run the mouse over the element and select edit. We go to the rules tab and press the plus button. Then we select the error function and press confirm. Now we can see that a rule with the description error has been created. We select it and press the conditions button. We can see that the window opens up to enter conditions. We now press the new button and have a window open to specify the conditions details. First we press the blue arrow, then select the element to which we want to add the validation rule, in our case, passenger age. And then we press OK. Now we select the less than or equal to operator and set 18 as value and select AND in the link. Then we press confirm. Now we see the condition we have defined. We press OK and then confirm. And once again we confirm. We already have our form defined and ready to be associated with an interactive task. So we open the flight ticket reservation SD diagram and save it under the name flight ticket reservation dine forms. Now after validating the reservation, but prior to the none end event, we add an interactive task called enter passenger preferences. In the task properties, we go to the dynamic forms group and press the button corresponding to the property application form. Now we press the button in forms and select the passenger preferences form. And we get the forms elements to have the option of mapping them with some relevant data in the diagram. And we press OK again. To execute the diagram, we right click on it and select run. As the GX Flow client opens up, we can see that the ticket reservation task of the flight ticket reservation dine form process appears as pending. So we select the task and execute. To continue with the execution, we enter a reservation by selecting a customer and now we set the reservation as available. We can see that the following task is enter passenger preferences, so we execute it. And the passenger preferences form is opened, where we will enter data. In meals considerations, we enter vegetarian food, comma, diet drinks, and check the reminder for medicine intake, and also enter the age of 15. We then press confirm. We will see the rule triggered, sending us an alert that the value entered as age is not valid because it must be 18 or greater. We now enter a value of 25 and press confirm. And we can see that the form is closed, with the input tray remaining empty. The data we've stored is now saved in the workflow tables and available in the instance of the process. In our example, the process ends just after that data entry. But if the process were to continue, with another task associated with the same form, it would be opened with the data entered previously. To prove this, we will modify the process diagram and add a new task between the Enter Passenger Preferences task and the None End event, called Verify Preferences. We associate the task we just created to the dynamic form Passenger Preferences and execute the process diagram. We execute the previous tasks.
And now we execute the verify preferences task. And we find that when the associated form is opened, all the fields in it contain the data we entered previously when the task was executed to enter the user preferences. The data entered on the form is stored in the workflow database and will be available in the whole instance of the process. In this video, we've seen the applicability of dynamic forms, which enable us to easily define screens for data entry in runtime without the need to modify the application's database or write any lines of code. Further details on dynamic forms are available at the link shown on screen.